Good afternoon, my name is Dr. McQueen and I'm a resident physician in Manatee Medical Center. So today, I would like to talk about a cardiology overview. So let's remember when you uh, start talking or study for the step one or two or three or four, uh, uh, when you start talking about cardiology, you have to try to study as a cluster one more time. So remember, ischemia is one of the things that you're going to encounter in the exam. Ischemic disease. This is the thing that will lead you to uh, infarction. So let's remember infarction. infarction. Then this will lead you to dilation of the heart. This can lead you to valvular disease or regurgitation. So at some point they will give you congestive heart failure and pulmonary edema. So you have to see uh, cardiology as a beautiful condition that, that will start here, uh, sometimes it will end here. So when they start asking questions, they can give you a patient with this condition, they can give you a patient with this condition, but remember, everything is start here. So one of the things that will lead you to ischemia is uh, when you talk about cigarette smoking. So, so the other thing is age. Okay. Age also. Diabetes mellitus is one of the risk factors that will lead you to ischemia. Direct risk factor. Okay? Remember, your arterial disease will give you ischemia some point in your life. But ischemia sometimes can be asked, uh, the other thing that can be true is uh, hypertension. Uh, the other thing can give you ischemia is uh, death from somebody in your family at L high LDH. LDL. Sorry, high LDL. And death from some member of your family early in in age. So ischemia sometimes uh, is being divided as an acute coronary syndrome. So ischemia at some point can start here. Acute coronary syndrome have three different parts. Uh, this is unstable. Unstable angina. This is non as the elevation MI and this is as the elevation myocardial infarction. So what you see here is the artery getting obstructed. Okay? So this is a patient sometimes what present with stable stable angina. So when they start talking about those people they will give you different scenarios. So this patient uh, we have chest pain, but when he rests, you will see the, the chest going away, okay? So uh, you will see some degree, some degree of obstruction here, okay? Then this can lead you to unstable angina. As I see, this is a coronary vessel that's getting obstructed. Also, this can give you to more obstruction, okay? At some point, what you will see, is a whole obstruction here. So one of the things that I wanted to see what is going inside here is all these coagulation factors that are activated in the system. So one of the things that you will see is One of the things you will get, if you see this for the, I mean, if you amplify this artery, what you're going to, to see in the artery is a lesion here. So that lesion is going to start producing the aggregation of platelets. Okay? At some point, this aggregation is going to cause that this artery uh, just stop passing, I mean, the, 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 the passing of oxygen is pretty much zero here. 
So this is the, the, the point when you block the artery and then you see infarction. So infarction is one of the things you will see if you begin here, this is uh, the, 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 the path of death that I call. So remember, this is one of the coagulation factors here. So what is going to happen here is this thromboblasting jelly factor is going to produce uh, fibrin, excuse me, fibrinogen, 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 it's going to produce fibrin, and the fibrin is going to deposit in this artery causing this, some kind of stabilization of this plate, okay, and then at the same time, we are going to be forming here is the production of uh, plasminogen. Jet. They will, at some point, produce plasmin. And remember, plasmin is going to try to destroy the clot, trying to cut this, you know? Like I said, everything that is happening in here, you can see it for the biggest uh, overview. And then, this is the coagulation cascade, but everything is started here when the platelets start aggregating. So, infarction is one of the things that you will see in ST elevation MI. And remember, ischemia, the first thing you ask when you suspect ischemia is you ask for an EKG. And the EKG will, will give you ST depression. But when you encounter a patient with infarction, what you're going to see is elevation of the ST and also production of troponin levels. Uh, one of the things you will see in the long run is the dilation of the heart. But also, this can cause dilation, but there's some condition that can cause dilation too. Alcohol abuse, for example. Alcohol abuse. This is a condition that also can cause. This is a condition that also can cause uh, dilation of the heart. It's very, very disease. The other thing that will cause dilation is Chagas disease. A, B, C, sometimes D. Toxirubicin. Like I said, when you study for this exam, you have to, as much as you can, put everything in one page. That way you can remember things. This is important. So remember, ischemia can cause infarction. Infarction at some point can cause dilation. But there's also other conditions that can cause dilation. And then you will see regurgitation. So one of the conditions that cause regurgitation are the things that you will see here. This is the other mnemonic that I use. Okay, this is mitral regurgitation, aortic regurgitation, but aortic regurgitation has some a specific cause. So let's remember these causes with the acronym of CREAM. Okay, this is the acronym that I use. Congenital, this can be congenital. Congenital. This can be re a rheumatoid uh, uh, disease. Uh, disease. This can also cause by endocarditis. Endocarditis. And this also can be caused by uh, aortic uh, dilation and Marfa syndrome. Aortic dilation and Marfa. As you can see, I'm trying to put as much as I can in one page. Then, one of the things you're going to see is congestive heart failure. Congestive heart failure uh, is an, an entity they will encounter as a, as a patient, I mean, as a student, as a, as a medical doctor, as a, as a resident, all the time in the emergency room. So one of the things I want you to remember about uh, congestive heart failure is that there is some cause that can exacerbate this, okay? One mnemonic that I use here is Heart. Remember, heart fail. Heart fail. So the, the, the first letter stands for hypertension, one of the conditions that pretty much can cause this. Okay? The other thing that you will see is uh, endocrine disease. Endocrine. The other, the other leader 
the other letter will cause uh, anemia, also can cause congestive heart failure. The R stands for rheumatoid disease. This is the letter T stands for toxins. A lot of toxins that can cause congestive heart failure. I already mentioned doxyrobicin can cause dilation, but at the end, this will also end up in congestive heart failure. Um, one other thing that you also will see is uh, failure to take medication. Failure to take meds. Okay. The other the other letter it will, arrhythmias also can cause all this condition. And then I have uh, infarction, as I said. Infarction. You see infarction here, you see infarction one more time here. This is the way you can remember things. And then, lung disease, like for example, pulmonary embolus, can cause congestive heart failure. And then you can have electrolyte disturbance, electrolyte, and die. As I said, this patient is going to present with shortness of breath. Uh, sometimes you will see the patient telling you that the patient has ortonia. Uh, they cannot lie flat. The other thing you will see in this patient is uh, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. They wake up early in the morning with shortness of breath. Uh, ascites can also can be a sign of congestive heart failure. And then uh, edema. Remember, this is the last thing you will see. This is an emergency guys. So when you encounter a patient with an emergency, just try to, to treat this patient before you even think about it. Like for example, the, the mnemonic that I use here is the LN. LN. And also OP. 